We've got boots on the ground in Indianapolis. Matt Williamson there to let us know what the scuttlebutt is at the NFL Scouting Combine. Jalen Carter news and your questions in our Peacock and Williamson mailbag coming up right now. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office with elite breakdowns, next-level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL Show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL on Twitter. That's where those questions are coming from on today's mailbag episode of P and W. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Matt, the big bombshell news of Wednesday at the combine was Jalen Carter. And I'm sure you're hearing people talk about it there. Uh, people are talking about it everywhere and how this might affect him with the law, with the league, with um, the NFL draft, of course. This being, uh, he was about to go up on stage, right? He was scheduled mm-hmm. at 10 30 a.m. Pacific time to go on stage when it was announced that as a result of the ongoing investigation into a January 15th, 2023 fatal crash that occurred on the 900 block of Barnett Shoals Road. Uh, in Athens Clark County in Georgia, uh, the police department has secured arrest warrants for Jalen Carter, 21 years old, for reckless driving and racing. The investigation found that uh, Chandler LaCroix, driver of a 2021 Ford Expedition, and Jalen Carter, driver of a 2021 Jeep Trackhawk, were operating their vehicles in a manner consistent with racing shortly after leaving the downtown Athens area at about 2.30 a.m. Evidence demonstrated that both vehicles switched between lanes, drove through the center lane, uh, drove in uh, opposite lanes of travel, overtook other motorists, drove at high rates of speed in an apparent attempt to outdistance each other. Evidence indicated that shortly before the crash, the expedition was traveling at about 104 miles per hour. The The toxicology report indicated that LaCroix's blood alcohol concentration was 0.197 at the time of the crash. Investigators determined that alcohol impairment, racing, reckless driving, and speed were significant contributing factors to the crash. The case will be given to the Solicitor General's office. And apparently um, misleading was Jalen Carter when asked about this, said he was miles away from this accident when in fact he was there and fled the scene. So... Jalen Carter in some hot water with the law locally, and it could be even worse for his NFL career, at least the start of it, uh, as the NFL and leagues and, and GMs are concerned. So, Matt, uh, what do you think of this late bo- this latest bombshell? And, and there's always something every year. There's one prospect that's expected to go really high, and something happens yeah. off the field that affects that stock. Um, what are you hearing in, in India about this Jalen Carter stuff? Yeah, I mean, apparently, as you said, the defensive tackles are all getting ready to do their hits at the podium. And they kind of say, guys, hold up a minute, hold up a minute. And then eventually they took him away. And uh, I mean, that had to be on purpose. I mean, trying to embarrass him or make a splash or whatever. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe not. Maybe I'm looking too much into that. Um, Just real quick on that point, yeah. because it, it, it seemed like that. It was like, he's about to go to the podium right. at the combine, but there was, a, there was a report that came out from, the Atlanta Journal of Constitution, I believe is the name of the paper, the local uh, Atlanta paper. There was a, an article that came out like right before this was announced that there was arrest warrant. So I wonder if people caught word of it. And so the police department said, well, we have to we have to announce the warrants now because now the story is getting out. So I wonder if that okay. had something to do with it or if it was like they wanted to do it before the combine uh, or maybe it was, you know, sort of dubious timing there. So it just the, the timing. Very curious, though. Yeah, way. no question about that. I think he's the best player in the draft. I mean, I think he's a guaranteed top four pick before all these things. And here's the little I'm hearing, and it's not fact. I'm not a reporter. I'm not breaking news. It's just kind of word behind the scene everywhere you kind of bring it up is, first of all, if you're a team that interviewed him, your interviews are already done. You know, so you didn't get a chance to ask about this incident. But these teams know so much more than people realize. You know, like my examples of this are we had a Secret Service agent that was in George Bush Sr.'s 
cabinet or in charge of, you know, um, keeping him safe. That's who did our background checks in Cleveland. You know, like that, just to give you some example of the level of people that these guys have. And I don't know if you remember Max Starks. He's an old Steeler. He's a six foot eight, 350 pound offensive tackle. Yeah, of course. It, yeah, I was up, but I've been on, on the air with Max. We went out last night. And when this broke, he's like, when I was getting drafted, my fifth grade teacher was called. My principal in my junior high was called. You know, like these guys have done background checks on Jalen Carter way deep before this. And I think there's been concern with him. You know, I, I hear the word immature left and right with this guy, you know, and he is a little younger. Um, I heard things like they had trouble. They had to make sure they could get him to the studio or the, the to the, uh, the, the stadium on time, you know, like needed babysat. You know, I never heard anyone saying he's a terrible human being. He does criminal activities, but I've heard a lot of people behind the scenes saying things of that nature that needs babysat, immature, not sure we can trust them, you know, that kind of thing. There's always the vague, oh, medical red flags, or there's character concerns, and you never know what's true, what's accurate, what exactly they mean when they say this stuff, and some people call BS on these things, and there was a report from Todd McShay about that, and he's mentioned, now oh, there's there's some character stuff with, with, uh, with Jalen Carter. Carter for some teams. He said that in December, so it wasn't like he knew right. about this incident. It hadn't even happened yet, so there's definitely something there, and I don't think it's a one-time deal. He, I think he did get a DUI, actually. Uh, or no, no, it was a, sorry. He had a speeding ticket prior to this in September, I, I believe okay. as well. So, you know, this isn't the first time he's going too fast in a car. Uh, I think all of us might've been guilty of that at some point when we were, you know, 21 or younger years sure, old. Sure. Um, so that doesn't mean he's a bad person, but there's something there and teams are going to have to look harder. And if you're going to spend the number one pick in the draft, the number three pick in the draft on a player, you want him to be a lot pretty of darn squeaky clean. Right. You, know, you want to make him the face of your franchise, first overall pick, fourth overall pick. Give him a ton of money, make him a big star, put him on the billboards. You know, a lot of owners would be like, eh, I don't know about that. You know, yeah, you want to tr- you want to be able to trust this player. Right. And uh, the, the most recent example of that is in a sound like the similar kind of stuff was uh, CJ Henderson, who was drafted by mm-hmm. the Jacksonville Jaguars and then immediately traded after his rookie year to the Carolina Panthers. And he was so talented and he was a top 10 pick, but they had to go to his house to pick him up to get him to come to practice. You know, and yeah, so- yeah, yeah. Some of that stuff's not as uncommon as people might think, especially 19, 20 year olds, first time away from home, you know, babysitting them a little bit or great players, but it's far from ideal, (laughs) of course, but I'm not a lawyer, but talking to some people here too, or they've at least speculated, it probably won't be hard. I mean, he wasn't breathalyzed. He's not, you know, the, the other driver was, as you mentioned, and had way over the legal limit. But you could trace him probably back to being at that bar or whatever and at the same time. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's it's and and maybe you could connect those dots. And we don't have right. the exact details. And and I'm sure teams are gonna have their own private investigators, and I'm sure that's what is part of this with the uh the the police department there in that county um in Athens. But you know, if he's there in the bar and there's people people are like, Yeah, Jalen Carter was drinking at this bar and and you know he was driving at 2.30 a.m., then you can connect yeah. those dots pretty easily, and that might be the reason why he fled that scene because he knew he would have come up with a point whatever on his breathalyzer too. And, right, exactly. And so it's not just um, – and here's the thing is the league doesn't need the, the the legal precedent to do their own thing either. So exactly. That's there's a chance that Jalen Carter, by the time the draft comes around, teams know that he's going to end up on some list or whatever, especially after what we saw with, with Henry Ruggs. That, that was the that was the, the time exact thing with that. that happened with Henry Ruggs was he was drunk driving going a hundred and something miles an hour and it ended up in a deadly crash like this was and it wasn't Jalen Carter's car that crashed in this but if he's racing a guy there's you know some guilt by association too with this and you can probably connect some dots there about a DUI potentially if they get those reports and they're able to do those checks with the bars and um and find out there but. So it's 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 not a good situation for Jalen Carter, whether it's with the law, whether it's with the league, or whether it's just teams now that won't draft him as high as they would have. You know, yeah. I, you would clearly put Will Anderson ahead of Jalen Carter in your mock drafts now for the Bears at the very least. At the very least. So my, my last two little nuggets on it are, you think anyone took video or pictures of Jalen Carter at a bar after Georgia's national title game? You know, let, that, of course. I mean, he's not exactly right. an unrecognizable figure. I mean, he's probably the star of the bar. He's the best player on the best team 
partying it up with college kids or whatever. And it's you know pretty what easy mean? to find him probably in the background of someone else's photo. Like, exactly. Exactly. Six, four, two, you know, three <laughs> right, right, you know? right, right, Although right. There's probably a lot of football players there, so it might not be as easy if it was just him with a bunch of civilians. Right. But, I mean, you can't prove that he was intoxicated, but it doesn't unless, make I mean, and who knows? There might, there might be footage of him actually drinking, too. Like, oh, that who knows? Out there, you know? Whatever. You're right. at the bar, other people's, you know, cell phones out. So, and But it is March 1st. You know, so what do we have seven weeks or so until the draft? I mean, yeah. the teams will get their answers. Legal stuff will come out. This is very fresh on our minds. And you immediately think Tunsil bong hits or whatever. You know, I mean, it's not right. draft day or Leo Collins had didn't even get drafted or, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. And, and so I, I want to dig into that a little bit more about what it could mean for him, what a slide could look like for Jalen Carter potentially in the NFL draft. What else Matt Williamson is hearing from Indianapolis and your mailbag question absolutely next today's episode brought to you by fan duel of course you can still bet on nfl football even though the nfl season is over future super bowl winners future mvps and of course those tasty tasty draft props that i love so much at fan duel america's number one sports book and now it's getting serious with the nba season you know, we're past midway point of the season, past the all-star game, past the, the trade deadline. It's the perfect time to download FanDuel because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure. Love the website. Love the app. They're super easy to use and build your own bets. And you can bet on everything from money line to point scores to threes drained. And uh, you can even you know, combine your bets for a bigger chance at a payout with same game parlays. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets. When you go to fanduel.com slash locked on, that's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more, make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So this is where it gets And Look, we're going to learn a lot, Matt, about Jalen Carter and about mm -hmm. what, it looks like with with you know details and i'm sure some of that will come out and i'm sure we won't hear every detail either and um every team that is interested in carter is going to do their investigating and teams maybe further down the first round that didn't think they would have an opportunity are going to start looking at this a lot harder and think oh what if he falls to x pick would we take him still and i think it gets really I like you know the bears it starts to get pretty easy so like you know let's say will anderson's off the board you're getting around pick five you know a couple quarterbacks will anderson's off the board and you're the seattle seahawks and you're staring at, at Jalen Carter. And now it's not like a tie, because this is easy to break a tie between Will Anderson and Jalen Carter. It's like, okay, this is off-field stuff. This guy's team captain, you know. Right, right. That's a close call guy. anyway. Right. And so that's an easy tiebreaker. But when you get to, say, pick five, and you're the Seahawks, and now you're like, well, this guy's got the best grade on our board. And there's a, a different clear, tier. There's a clear tier break here. Right. He's obviously the best guy, and that'll tell us a lot about what teams think about him. Yeah, and – do you trust him? Do you think he's going to grow up? Is he smart? Is he not? You know, what's the root of this? Is there a lot more we don't know? I mean, mm -hmm. these are old examples, but I was glued to the draft as a fan when Warren Sapp and Randy Moss fell. They were like the best players in the draft. Everybody knew it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Randy, Randy Moss, Moss was, was obvious. It's like, well, he's the best guy, uh, but no idea where he's going to go. And he went like 18th and Kevin Dyson yeah. went ahead of him and he's the best receiver prospect we ever saw, you know? And I, I don't even think there was like verified arrests or anything with either one of those guys. I think it was like marijuana and he got kicked out of Florida state. Yeah. Yeah. Know, it was whatever. like knucklehead kind of went from one school to another and, and right. you know, teams thought differently about certain things back in the day than they do now. Marijuana is um, a lot different, obviously now. Right. And, you know, right. And it turns out it's like, well, and probably overdid that one with Randy Moss. But if you're talking about putting people's, lives in danger that you know mm -hmm. might be something else and it, it's oh, not sure. gonna be, uh, and really for teams, get away, right right and and teams don't care if you're an angel right and in some cases they don't expect they you to be honest they want right. a player with a little bit of an edge sometimes right like mm -hmm. that's that could be a positive on the scouting report but but they don't want criminals they don't want bad they don't want criminals yeah, and right, you have right, to right. be you have to be available too that so too. <laughs> right. the thing is you're you not dragging the butt to practice and you're not going to be the player that you should be and they have to come to your house and get you or if you're going to be suspended, then, you know, then it doesn't matter how good you are because you're not on the field. Mm -hmm. I, I loved your point earlier, though, I, and I hadn't thought of that like it's happened so soon. The NFL doesn't care if you're convicted or not. He might enter the league suspended. 
Right. Yeah. They don't need to, to, they don't even need to wait for that to play out. I'm sure they will to a certain degree and they don't have to do anything until September. So that's, what's also going to weigh on teams minds. Teams will have to sort of do their own investigating and think, okay, if he's guilty of this and we've got this information, there might even be more that we don't have. Would he even be suspended? Would we even be able to play him as a rookie? Right. This list or this list. So there's a lot that goes into this and we'll find more details out. I'm sure about this with Jalen Carter, but unfortunately it's going to hurt his draft stock and you can't say he's a top four lock anymore. And you might not be able to say he's a first round lock at this point anymore. But I I think those are the clear areas where we're going to learn a lot about what teams think about him is, you know, if he gets past, say pick five after after will anderson's off the board after a couple of quarterbacks are off the board and he would clearly be the top player left or maybe uh towards the end of round one when you know those first round grades quote unquote are around like that's I mean, what i was thinking is maybe I've been the, saying the same thing the about first rounders are gone right, yeah let's say you, you know? have 17 first rounders on your board and there's a team's picking 18 and all the first rounders are gone except for Jalen Carter, you know, mm-hmm. and if they're still passing on him, and that's going to tell you something. And if he's getting out of the first round, you know, he could tumble for for a while until it stops the this until basically it stops mattering if you blow a pick on it. Yeah, and I was thinking, hey, the Chiefs have taken some risks on some guys, you know, mm-hmm. and you th- what if he plays only twelve games for the Chiefs? That'd be pretty good next to Chris Jones. Or of right. course, of course, I was asked around here. I'm like, well, Cam Hayward could take him under his wing, and the Steelers could be fine, and there's great culture here, and I mean, there's better environments and worse environments for him, for sure. I mean, I'm not saying any of those things are going to happen. But I think uh, Tyron Matthews is a pretty good one. He was a, he was a first yeah, round right, right. talent all day, fell to the third round. Yeah, it's a great call. It turned, it turned around, he had things figured out, and yeah, it was exactly. a great, great pick. So we uh, cited good examples. There's also many that don't go well. Not all are sap and moss and that. yeah, right. Someone, someone brought up on Twitter actually earlier. You remember Isaiah Wilson, first round oh. pick for. Uh, actually out of Georgia, Georgia. Right? All right. Yeah. Isaiah Wilson, offensive tackle for the, the Tennessee Titans Heist, yeah. late round one. He uh, played one NFL game in his career and nobody wants him. Right. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that could be the risk. Round pick. Yeah. It could be the risk. So people do a lot more homework, obviously, and they have time to do it, but more bad stuff might come out. That's true. That's very true. So this uh, is definitely not over. We'll find out a lot more about Jalen Carter and hopefully, you know, he wasn't intoxicated and maybe this is a, an overblown story and it was just, you know, a bad decision and not something mm-hmm. much worse than that. Yeah, hopefully we'll see. Did you see the NFL PA's poll from players about different organizational strengths and, and which teams they would want to play for based on the treatment of families and food service and weight rooms and and facilities and training staff and uh, travel? Did you see all of this? I did not see the list. I just heard where the Steelers landed, to be honest with you, because somebody mentioned it to me as we were going off off the air. So I need to go check it out. And I'm curious who's at the top and who's at the bottom. Uh, we were asked about this by by multiple people, including Josh here that linked to it and said he would love to for us to discuss this. Uh, there's two things that really jumped out to me. One was the Washington Commanders we're getting like F minuses on stuff. It, it was they sure were clearly the worst in the league yep, yep, yep. At, at many, many things. Um, there was the Arizona Cardinals that, that stopped, um, you know, f- traveling and they got a really poor travel grade because they stopped traveling in a cushy manner. And, and they started, um, you know, they stopped with the, with the, the flights where everyone could sleep and, and lay down in there. And, and it basically made, made flights and travel a lot cheaper for the team, mm-hmm. which was a lot less comfortable for the players. But I thought one of the most interesting on the travel side, for some reason, the travel side of things was the one that was really, uh, I think it was the That's biggest difference to players and, so. and F's and yeah, it was important yeah. to players. Seattle Seahawks. If you lose the game, you don't travel back first class, but if you win, you get first class travel after the game. Interesting. I find it, I mean, I, I do want to look at the list. I would, I'm very interested to see who's the top five, who's the bottom five. I don't care if you're 12 or 16 or whatever. But it kind of reminds, I mean, like, it's almost like when unions were created. Like, no one would have ever spoke out against the Rockefellers or Carnegie's about work conditions, you know, <laughs> or, you know, the 70s teams or the 80s teams, or let alone George Hallis's Bears or whatever. It's pretty cool that these, players actually have a little insight, you know, and can tell you, Hey, things aren't as good here as they should be, or compared to other teams. And they all talk, they've all been on multiple teams and, you know, a lot of them have and know if they're having it good or not. 
And it's going to hurt in free agency and things like that too. Absolutely. Uh, I got one more quote from the com or from, yeah, from the combine from Bengals GM Duke Tobin, and then some more mailbag questions as well in this edition of Peacock and Williamson. And I do want to thank everybody for making us your first listen on the locked on podcast network and make sure you are subscribed up to the brand new Peacock and Williamson YouTube channel. We're trying to grow that thing. And so it would really help us out. And we'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button on YouTube. If you're not on YouTube now, go to YouTube, find the Peacock and Williamson channel. That is youtube.com slash at Peacock and Williamson and hit the subscribe button, the the thumbs up and all of that. And uh, we would appreciate you for that. And we'll see you there. And maybe you want to catch a podcast if you don't usually watch in our faces. And uh, as go. we as we report Get on, on this NFL weirdness that happens, uh, especially at the combine. Love the combine stories, Matt. So much stuff, yeah. so much anonymous stuff, but some really good quotes from GMs. This is my favorite quote of the day from the GMs. And this was from Bengals executive Duke Tobin. And there's been a lot of speculation that they won't be able to afford to pay Joe Burrow and T Higgins and that T Higgins would be the guy to be traded this off season. And they could get a ransom potentially for a, a big time wide receiver. And Duke Tobin's response to any trade speculation for T Higgins was quote, you want a good receiver? Go find one on your own. <laughs> I liked it. Yeah. I love that quote. That's I love it too. I mean, it, it'll be hard to keep those three chase Higgins Burrow. But you can keep anyone you want. It just you just have to cut corners elsewhere, and you can stagger them a little. But hey, the Bengals are in it to win it. I mean, they might win the Super Bowl this year and then move on from Higgins. You know, you gotta you gotta take your chance while you can. While Burrow's cheap. Speaking of the NFL draft, this question from Michael. He says, "How risky is missing on a quarterback? Imagine if the Jets went anywhere else in 2021: Micah Parsons, Patrick Sertan, Jamar Chase, uh, and we're now adding Rodgers to that roster with the New York Jets." I don't think it's as risky as you think. Like, that's a great point. They would be way better with those players. But usually if you miss on a quarterback, well, you're back picking in the top five or ten again. You know what I mean? Like, you get another bite at the apple. If you, I'm more of a believer of when in doubt, just draft another one. You know I mean? Or if you're the Lions right now, golf is fine. But this is might be your last opportunity to pick in the top ten. You might want to grab it, you know, grab the guy while you can it's funny because you could you could look at it exactly the opposite way too. What if the Kansas City Chiefs decided not to trade up for great points Holmes because they had a you know playoff quarterback and they were fine. You know they didn't need a quarterback, but they went and got a quarterback. And what if they didn't do that? So uh, and it pays off much bigger mm -hmm. if you hit on a quarterback than if you miss on one. And I agree. Like the Forty exactly. Niners in the same draft traded up to pick number three. Well. They were or they were sitting at number twelve. The guy who got drafted twelve was Parsons. Imagine Parsons on that defense across from Bosa. Sure, right. And then two other first rounders that they had would have been able to add to that roster with Brock Purdy or Jimmy Garoppolo or whoever. And, and who knows? We haven't seen what Trey Lance is going to be. But there's a lot of. But even if he's a bust, your your Niners are doing pretty well without him right now. They're doing okay without him. Right? <laughs> right, it would have yeah, been right, better right. if he turns out to be a bust by drafting another position. But if you hit on the quarterback, it's it's worth it. And so yeah, exactly. that's that's definitely something that you could look at both ways as it pertains to the the cost of missing on a quarterback, but the, the cost of passing on a good one, too. And speaking mm -hmm. of the 49ers and uh, any other team in that draft in that Patrick Mahomes draft, you know, they didn't any any team ahead of them could have taken a quarterback and been a lot better off. And uh, from the 49ers perspective, I just bring them up because I know them the best. They're they're a new regime, and they're like, ah, oh, we don't want to start with quarterbacks, so they kind of just push the quarterbacks aside. And it turned out that was the year where there was, you know, maybe one of the all time greats in Patrick Mahomes there, and they're just like, eh, let's we're going to draft this defensive lineman that we know a lot about locally, and and we think he's got high character, and Solomon Thomas at, at number three after we trade down one spot, and and not really even consider the quarterbacks very seriously. And it's like, whoops, okay, you probably should have uh, considered the quarterbacks in that draft. Yeah, right. And obviously there's tons of hindsight here, but it's very easy to forget that Josh Allen was an unbelievably risky pick. I mean, to the Anthony Richardson level. I mean, that guy was nothing like the player he is now. But if the, but the hit, the hit, I mean, hitting on him is just so much more worth it than if, than the, the worst case scenario, which is the Jets scenario. The Jets aren't buried. They're not done. You know, I mean, it's, it's not the Jamarcus Russell era where he's eating up tons of your cap. And, yes. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I think 
the new cap ramifications of highly drafted quarterbacks is much mm-hmm. different as well. So it doesn't yeah, completely yeah. crush you. You don't you don't walk into the league as one of the highest paid players in the entire NFL if you're drafted number one overall. Uh, I remember uh, speaking of the 49ers, I remember in uh, what year was this? 2008 when Vernon Davis was drafted. He was a top 10 pick at tight end. He was the highest paid tight end in the NFL. Right. It's a flawed system. Pick. And then you're kind of resented in your locker room too. You know, like you're making way more than me and I'm a 10 year veteran and I don't even know if you're good. You know, it's not the kid's fault. And and they would stick with those bad quarterbacks for longer too. You, you, that guy would, be, true. He would just be a bad quarterback for you because you couldn't get out from under it for three, four years. Right, right, and right. Now, I, can't, I can't do this again and have two of those contracts. <laughs> right. right. Now you have the Arizona Cardinals who draft the quarterback in the top 10. They're like, ah, we didn't like that much. And we're at number one and this guy's better. So we're going to take this quarterback. And we'll dump him for a second or third round pick or whatever they got. They got yeah, a little bit back on their investment, you know? We'll see if that's what the Jets do. Maybe the Jets do go get her. What were the Jets just gonna say? Ah, we just we're gonna sneak for a few more years. Maybe a Hall of Famer will be available for us later at quarterback. He, he I can't mean, even do that either. I mean, they might settle for car. I, I mean, side yeah. note here, I know we got to wrap things up, but I mean, I've been told the Jets covet Rogers, cars the the consolation prize, and then Jimmy would be the consolation prize as consolation prize. So I think that one of those three things happens with New York. Car definitely making his rounds. You know, Saints already. Yeah, he's here. Before, he was still on the on the Raiders. Uh, the Carolina Panthers and the New York Jets seems to seem to be the the hottest on the car trail as well. Mm-hmm. One more quick question here, Matt. Okay. We, uh, this one from Simboski says: Is Josh Allen going to be the next Big Ben? Immense talent with great defense, probably wins a Super Bowl at some point, but can't consistently beat his comp- in contemporaries to win multiple Super Bowls. Yeah. I mean, Ben has two rings. One, he was a key component. One, one, he was a young guy, you know, with much like Brady was not the driving force of the team. No ballot hall of, I mean, no doubt hall of famer, immensely talented, biggest, strongest, baddest dude of your era, just physically. Sounds like a good comparison and makes it sound like that's disappointing. I think that's bonkers. (laughs) Yeah. In it, like in it consistently and you win a couple right. of rings. I think Pretty a lot good. of people, I think a lot of people would kill to be big Ben. And I think if you asked Josh Rosen right now, he said, Hey, this is the end of your career. You, you won two Super Bowls. Congratulations. Hall of Famer. He'd be like, cool. I'll take it. That's pretty darn good. Maybe I would maybe be greedy for more, but that's not bad. Yeah. The, the way that's worded, it almost sounds like a bad thing. It does. When there's maybe 10, 15 quarterbacks in the history of the league that wouldn't trade with Ben. But if you said Josh Allen, hey, you're gonna have a really great career, all those other things, but you're not gonna get any Super Bowls, he'd probably say, No, I'm not taking that. I'm gonna, I won't take it. Right, I'm gonna right, play right. through this and I'm gonna go win. Right. So that's I mean, that's do you, do you get over the hump? Do you win one? And, and Mahomes is gonna end up with more than Josh Allen, most likely at the end of their careers. But does he get one? You know, does he get mm-hmm. past Mahomes and win a Super Bowl? That's that's the goal for the Buffalo Bills and Josh Allen. And I'm not defending him because he's Stealer, but Rogers only has one, Breeze only has one, Eli, you know, and, and, and Eli has two, but I mean of uh, this right. era. Having two of this era is like the third best out there or whatever it is. You know, I mean, there's better yeah. players than Ben that only have one. Yeah. You think Philip Rivers looks longingly at Aaron Rodgers one right. Super Bowl? Exactly. Thanks for all the questions, everybody. We had a lot to get to, so we didn't get to a ton of questions. But if we have any leftover questions, feel free to keep sending them all week long. We'll filter some in as Matt gets more intel from Indianapolis, more on the scouting combine. We're going to get start to see some heights and weights and speeds as well. Oh, yeah. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen. Make sure you hit subscribe. Tell a friend about Peacock and Williamson back tomorrow. Right here, Peacock and Williamson.